Hi friend, welcome to Unexplainable Stories of Hope and Healing. I am your host, Erica Wiggenhorn, and today we are going to talk about um, kind of a difficult topic, hope and healing uh, in depression. And depression is a big issue in our society today, and I'm so delighted to have uh, my friend Rebecca here with us today. Um, not only share her own story and struggle, but also uh, she works with people who struggle with depression. And so she's going to have a lot of uh, good practical advice and some help and encouragement to offer us today. So thank you for being here. And Rebecca, thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, Tell us a little bit about your story and why are you so passionate about helping people who struggle with depression? Sure. So my story starts in 2012 when I was getting out of the Marine Corps. And I tried really hard to stay into the Marine Corps and it wasn't going to happen. And after about six months of fighting to stay in, um, my contract ended and I did not know what I was going to do. And at that time, I just was searching for what am I going to do? The Marine Corps doesn't want me. Mm -hmm. And I tried other branches and they didn't want me. And it was really hard. It was really hard to be told for whatever circumstances, you're never going to be able to do this again. And there was something wrong with me. That's what it felt like. There was something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And so I really started struggling. I started having depression. I started having anxiety. Um, I was anywhere I went for the first time, I was having panic attacks. And so it was all wrapped up, a lot of it in that search for identity and Mm -hmm. kind of figuring out what is wrong with me that I can't do what I enjoy doing so much. So I ended up um, kind of distracting myself by saying I'm going to help other people. (laughs) And so I went into social work and I got a master's degree in social Mm -hmm. work. And while studying on social work and working on that degree, I started seeing more of this. And I started realizing how many veterans and other just individuals in general were having these same feelings and similar Mm -hmm. feelings of Mm -hmm. searching for that belonging and purpose Mm -hmm. and struggling with their identities. And I, several of the Marines that I worked with completed suicide during Mm -hmm. that time. And it was very, very difficult. Yeah. Um, I started working with veterans in crisis a couple of years later, and okay. I started working in a suicide prevention agency. So I answered mm-hmm. different lifelines. I would go out in the community and work with individuals um, and respond to crisis situations mm-hmm. as a mental health provider mm-hmm. and talk through whether it was depression or anxiety or mm-hmm. suicidal ideations and really kind of figure out what was going on and, and try to help mm-hmm. get through that immediate crisis situation yeah. to where they could get connected to ongoing services. Um, so it was a, a lot. I did that for three and a half years and then recently decided to stay home with the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still do some work on the side where I, I train on different topics mm-hmm. with mental health. And yeah. I instruct a, a local community college mm-hmm. on behavioral health. So still mm-hmm. kind of getting into that aspect of things. Okay. So for the person out there watching and saying, oh, you just described me. I am that mm-hmm. person. You know, I, I'm, I've had a major life transition. I don't know who I am. Um, The future seems very uncertain. I'm struggling with anxiety. I'm depressed. Um, What what hope would you offer them? Right. I would definitely say um, don't don't be ashamed and don't be embarrassed of those feelings. Mm -hmm. Don't don't let that um, impact you in that way because a lot of times we tend to think that we're the only ones and that nobody's going to understand what we're going through, what we're feeling. And um, studies actually have shown that one out of 10 individuals Mm -hmm. experiences a mood disorder in any given year. So the, there's a lot of people out there that we might not know, and it might not be um, a family member or a friend. Mm -hmm. It, they might've known somebody or talked to Mm -hmm. somebody or encountered Mm -hmm. it themselves. And so that can help just knowing that it's not as uncommon and there's nothing wrong with you for 
feeling yeah. that way and for sure. struggling with those things. Mm -hmm. um, it happens and we can all go through those seasons. Mm -hmm. um, and the hope lot for me, a big piece of that hope was knowing that that struggle and, and that experience right then, it doesn't define who you are. It mm -hmm. doesn't define, you know, it didn't define me. It wasn't, I am Rebecca, I am depression. It's, I'm mm -hmm. experiencing this. Sure. So there's still so much more to who you are than mm. that. Yeah. I like how you really differentiated that because I think when you're in the midst of it, it can feel so mm. all consuming Yes. that then it just feels like this is all that I am because these emotions that I'm experiencing are so consuming. Um, so I, I appreciate the fact that you separated what you're experiencing from who you are. Right. And I think there's a lot of power in that. What What are some practical things? Mm -hmm. If a person is saying, you know, I, I sense myself really slipping into depression. Mm -hmm. um, I'm having a hard time leaving my home. I'm having a hard time getting out of bed. I'm, um, maybe I'm even having suicidal ideations. What What are some practical things that you would tell them to do? Right. So, and it can, it can vary for mm -hmm. everybody. What works for one person might not work for another person. And, um, but the big thing is kind of identifying what those things are. And so there are a lot of different coping skills that people can utilize. And mm -hmm. one of the things that can be very helpful is having several that you can okay. do mm -hmm. and don't just always rely on one coping skill, but rely mm -hmm. on several different mm -hmm. ones that you can do. And, have them be skills that you can use whether you're sitting in your car or you're at home or you're at a restaurant and it's, sure. it's something where you can just do it right then and there mm -hmm. and so it can be a variety of things it might be taking deep breaths or counting one to ten mm -hmm. it could be cleaning or sweeping it could be listening to music and so there are a variety of different coping skills mm -hmm. that people can utilize and there are a lot of tools available as well so mm -hmm. Um, like I actually found a paper once that had 99 different coping skills okay. that somebody mm -hmm. could use. And yeah. it was just a list and mm -hmm. you could keep that and just check them off and mm -hmm. keep track of what worked and didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I would say is recognize those coping skills that you might have that might not be the healthiest. Okay. And so there are things that we might do. Um, mm -hmm. whether it's smoking or drinking or other substances, mm -hmm. some people cut, and those are all ways that we release our tension, or maybe okay. we just want to feel something. Okay. And that can easily go down this mm -hmm. track that's not going to sure. be the healthiest. It might sure. be more harmful in the long run. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely watch out for those right. types of things as well. Right. And then finally, I would make sure that whatever information you're getting mm -hmm. is from a very strong source. It's very easy. There are a lot of whether it's a book or a podcast or mm -hmm. somebody who calls himself a professional, but it might have good intentions. Mm -hmm. A lot of things out there can still cause harm. And mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that wherever we're searching for that help is something mm -hmm. that is going to be beneficial and mm -hmm. that we don't ultimately put ourselves in more harm. Sure. We, in those moments, we're very vulnerable. Mm. In those dark mm -hmm. moments when yeah. we're depressed, we are very, yeah. very vulnerable to suggestion and mm -hmm. things that might not be healthy. Mm -hmm. And so that's when it's really important to make sure we're mm -hmm. trying to be smart and trying to watch out yeah. for those things. Yeah. Good advice. Um, in your own struggle mm -hmm. with depression, um, explain a little bit what role your faith played. Right in helping you deal right. with depression? So I have, um, I've believed in Christ my whole mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. um, and still struggled with depression. Sure. Right? So yeah. it is, it's still something that it's, yeah. you're not immune to it just because <laughs> right? you are a Christian. <laughs> sure. And I think oftentimes it's, we can almost be embarrassed of that. Like there, mm. I can't feel that way if I go to church. I can't feel that way in front of my Christian friends. Like sure. I can't show that mm -hmm. or my family. Mm -hmm. And so that was really hard for yeah. a while to, to accept and to own that. And I still went through these, the struggle for a while of depression, especially after my son was born mm -hmm. and I was having thoughts of suicide mm -hmm. and 
it was a very difficult time. And I remember for me, it was music. There was just this, if I could listen to music and positive music, not just anything out there, but if I could listen to a strong positive music, then Mm -hmm. that could help just get me through that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, And I started listening to a couple of songs that reiterated to me and almost taught me in a Mm -hmm. new way exactly what my relationship with Christ looked like Mm -hmm. in a way that I didn't really comprehend before. So there were two songs and one was child of God where they just keep saying, I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Uh And that Uh was just, I remember one day I just broke down and cried just realizing that it didn't matter. I I was, I was going to mess up as a mom. I was going to mess up as a wife, as a daughter, as an employee, I, as a boss, yeah. I was going to mess up. Yeah. But all of that didn't matter because there was consistency in my relationship with Christ. Mm-hmm. That was not going to change mm-hmm. regardless of any of the other things. And the other one was um, who you say I am. And it says, you say I'm enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that again, just reiterated that regardless of anything else yeah. that happened, I am enough. Mm, And, Mm -hmm. you know, for for 30 years, I I didn't realize that. Yeah. But coming to that recognition. Sure. And it doesn't mean that things are going to be easy. And it Mm -hmm. doesn't mean I'm never going to feel that, feel pain again or feel depression again. Mm -hmm. But even in those darkest moments, I can remind myself, I am enough. I'm a child of God. And I'm going to, we're going to get through this. Yeah. Beautiful. For the person out there watching who maybe they don't struggle Mm -hmm. with depression, but they have someone they love who does, and they're feeling, they're feeling helpless. They don't know how to help. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? I would say don't give up um, because you never know what it is that you're going to say or do Mm -hmm. that is going to help somebody. Sure. You know, um, so you might try talking to them or listening to them, mm-hmm. offering, inviting them to come do things. Mm-hmm. And they might turn you down every single time. Mm-hmm. And that that might happen. But don't give up because it, it just one day they might say yes. Mm-hmm. And I remember specifically my husband mm-hmm. because he said he had no idea what to do to help me when I was going yeah. through this. Yeah. And he asked me, what do you need? And I told him, I have no idea. Yeah. what I need. Cause yeah. in that moment I didn't have any idea. Mm-hmm. And he was very supportive, very much like, okay. Mm-hmm. And he kept asking me. And some days I would tell him I need a hug. And some days I would tell him I need to lay down, mm-hmm. but knowing that he was available mm-hmm. non-judgmentally yeah. and he was supportive mm-hmm. and he was patient that allowed me to slowly open up more and more to him in mm-hmm. those situations. Yeah. The other thing that he did was he actually attended a training. Okay. So there are several free trainings available mm-hmm. in the community. If you look in your local communities mm-hmm. where whether it's mental health first aid training or assist training, mm-hmm. they can learn how to interact with somebody who's having depression or any okay. kind of mental health crisis, yeah. um, how to talk about suicide with somebody mm-hmm. without feeling nervous or uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. he attended one of those trainings and that allowed him to feel more comfortable in having those conversations. So I definitely suggest looking into those. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, regardless of whether they are a believer or not offer to pray for them. Mm. And I have done that several times and nobody has ever turned me down Okay, because again, in those, in those moments where we are feeling like that, we are open to those suggestions. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very, very good opportunity, powerful opportunity Mm -hmm. to invite somebody into that relationship through prayer. Yeah. I love that. I love that because sometimes we, we don't know what to do, but we always know we can pray. Right. Right. And we don't have to have the answer all the time. Sometimes we just have to even remind ourselves we won't always have the answer, but God has an answer. And so crying out to him Mm -hmm. is probably not only helpful for the person we're praying for, but even for ourselves. So there's comfort in that on both ends. So yes, yes. thank you, Rebecca, 
for sharing your story and um, giving some really good practical advice. And we will definitely put um, some of those websites and resources that Re yeah. Rebecca talked about um, today uh, on our page here for you to access if this is uh, something that you're going through. But Rebecca, thank you for being just so real and just also so helpful um, because we can talk about these things, but then oftentimes we don't know what to do. Right. And you gave us such yeah. great tips of just taking that next step and knowing it. there is hope. We don't have yes. to stay right here. We can take a step forward and we can do right. some very simple things that don't require yes. a whole lot to just hopefully know that we're not always going to feel the way we feel right now. And life isn't always going to be the way it is right now. There's right. a new day yes. and there's hope. Yes. So thank you. Well, friend, we sure hope that you were encouraged by Rebecca's story today. I know I definitely felt equipped um, by some of these really powerful suggestions that Rebecca offered us today. And if you were encouraged by Rebecca's story today or helped at all, we certainly would love to hear that by you liking or commenting or subscribing. And we would certainly invite you to share this video. If you know someone struggling with depression or suicidal thoughts or have someone in their family who is, by all means, please share this with them so that they can have hope. Um, that this is not how things will always be. Um, of course, if you are struggling personally, uh, we would invite you to visit our website at ericawigginhorn.com. We would be honored to pray for you and um, help, help guide you to some of these good, solid resources that Rebecca talked about with us today. Um, but mostly, friend, what we want you to know is that life here is often going to throw the unexpected at us. But unexplainable Jesus is always more than enough. Thank you and God bless.